Hello everyone, and welcome back. Today we're going to explore a special toolbox associated with the MATLAB programming language, in particular the optimization toolbox. So make sure you have the optimization toolbox installed into your MATLAB programming language, or else some of these functions won't be able to be at least easily found or implemented. So let's get started. So the first problem that we want to look into is the simple uh, linear programming problem. For example, let us assume we have this objective function f of x, y is equal to 5x plus 4y, for which we seek to maximize, sub subject to these two constraints that 2x plus 7y is less than or equal to 45, and 7x plus 5y is less than or equal to 55. Um, and let's assume that um, both of them, both of these variables x and y have the restrictions that x and y are both greater than or equal to zero. So how do we go about doing this using the tools that are in the optimization toolbox? So the first thing that I need to define is, for example, my coefficient matrix A. So A is going to be equal to 2, 7 on the first row, and then 7, 5 on the second row. So how the linear programming function in the optimization toolbox works is you can actually have less than or equal to constraints and also equal to constraints uh, in separate matrices. So it's not completely necessary that your linear program is in standard form, although it may help make some problems a little bit easier to code, right? But it's not necessary in this case. So this is going to be our less than or equal to coefficient matrix A, and then we need to define our corresponding coefficient matrix B, where B is going to be equal to 45 and 55. So once we have A and B, now we need to talk about the um, restrictions on X and Y. So the lower bound, which I'm going to store in the vector um, LB, is going to be 0 for X and 0 for Y. And then for our upper bound, um, let's assume that we do not have any upper bounds. In particular, infinity would be the upper bound in this case. Um, so in order to put an infinite upper bound, we would do INF and INF. So that is X is greater than or equal to 0 and Y is greater than or equal to 0. So X in the first column and Y in the second column. So the next thing that we need to define is our objective function coefficients, which is going to be 5 and 4. Now keep in mind the linear programming function is based from the perspective of minimization, right? So if 5x plus 4y is maximized at a point, that means negative 5x minus 4y is minimized at a point. So that means our coefficient vector, which I'm going to call c, is going to be minus 5 minus 4. Once we have everything defined, now we can find our solution. So x is going to be our solution, I'm going to call it x, and the function that we're going to be using is LINPROG, so linear programming. The first thing that we're going to give it is our coefficients for our objective function, then our coefficients for less than or equal to matrix A, then B, then it's going to be asking our matrix coefficients for the equalities. So that's if, for example, if we have 2x plus 7y is equal to 45 and 7 plus 5y is equal to 55 or some other thing. So those will go there and BEQ would be our next um, uh, coefficients that we need to define in other vectors. But we do not have them, so in order to say we don't have them, just give it an open and close brackets and open and close brackets for the next one. And then the next thing that we need to tell it uh, would be the lower bound and upper bound for our variables. So our lower bound is stored in LB, our upper bound is stored in UB, and um, that's pretty much all we need to define for this particular scenario. So if we give this program a run, that is going to give us some errors. So where is the error located here? So the error is obviously located because we cannot spell um, UB because we spelled up instead of UB. Um, so now that if we run this program, it should give us uh, no particular errors at all. And that is the solution 4.1 and 5.3 um, for which generate the maximum value of that function, which technically is the value for which the function that we're actually minimizing here in the linear programming function is actually sort of targeting here. But keep in mind the location is the same, the only difference is the value. So if we evaluate f, x, y at these points, that gives us the maximum value f for which we could achieve um, with these particular constraints. Let's consider another linear programming problem. In particular, let us again assume that we're trying to maximize the function f of x is equal to x1 plus 2x2 subject to these following constraints, x1 plus x2 plus x3 is 20, 2x1 plus x2 plus x4 is equal to 30. So notice that we have th uh, four different decision variables and our vector x. So technically we have um, up here 0x3 plus 0x4, which we need to define when we start talking about our coefficient matrix C. 
Um, and let's assume that x1, x2, x3, and x4 are all on the interval 0 to infinity, right? So that's going to help us define our lower bound and upper bound for our linear programming function. So do we have any less than or equal to constraints here? The answer is no. Um, so we're going to define a to be equal to blank, and we're going to define b to be equal to blank here. Um, and generally, you could actually do this outside of the Linprog function. And then we're going to define our equality coefficient matrix A to be equal to 1, 1, 1, and 0, because we do not have x4 there. And then on the second equality, we have 2, 1, 0, and 1. And then our BEQ vector is going to be 20 and 30. Right. So that is our AEQ and BEQ function. The next thing we need to do is define our lower bound. So our lower bound is going to be 0 for all four of our decision variables. And our upper bound is going to be equal to infinity for all of our decision variables, which is very good. And then we can define our coefficient vector for our objective function to be equal to. So again, keep in mind, this is from the perspective of minimization. So we need to minimize minus one, minus two, zero, and zero to get our um, location for the maximum value. So once we have all of those things defined, now we can use the Linprag function to find um, what we want to do. So x is going to be equal to lin prog of our coefficient vector C, A, B, A, Q, B, E, Q, L, B, and U, B, right? And keep in mind, notice that this is from the last example and we don't want that to um, conflate. So once we run this, that's why we have the CLC there uh, at the top. So once we run that, notice that that gives us our optimal solution. So that means our function is maximized when x1 and x3 are equal to 0 and x2 and x4 are equal to 20 and 10 respectively. So that is the solution to our linear programming problem with respect to that objective function and those constraints. Now let's consider this example. Suppose where our goal is to minimize this particular function f of x, which is given by 5 minus x1 minus 3x to the quantity squared plus 7 minus x1 minus 5x to the quantity squared plus 12 minus x1 minus 7x2, the quantity squared. So what are we looking at here? So this is definitely not a linear program because the objective function isn't even linear, right? So this is a nonlinear program. In particular, if you're familiar with regression, this is, of course, the minimization of the error sum of squares or the sum of squared residuals for a simple linear regression model, in case you're familiar with that. But if not, that's okay. Let's assume we want to find the values of x1 and x2 that minimize this particular functional. That's the goal of this particular problem, which is nonlinear. So since we cannot use a linear programming tool, we would have to use a more general tool that um, numerically solves nonlinear programs. So what do we need to define here? So the first thing that we need to do is define a function that represents our nonlinear functional, since we cannot represent it at least easily in vector form. So the uh, objective function is going to be defined to be equal to the function, uh, which is defined by a function of x. So this function of x is going to be split into two pieces. So we're going to have 5 minus x1 minus 3 times x2, the quantity squared. Now notice I'm doing dot, exponent, uh, dot exponentials because x1 is a vector and x2 is a vector. And then we're going to have plus, and then we're going to do the same here. So we're going to have, uh, what is it, uh, 7 minus x1 minus 5 times x2 the quantity squared, and then plus, and then I'm just putting these on different lines so it's a little bit more easier to read for me, and then 12 minus x1 minus 7 times x2, um, the quantity squared, because sometimes it's actually easier to debug um, codes if you sort of organize things in a nice way. Um, the next thing that I want to define is the restriction matrices. Do we, so do we have any um, less than or equal to constraints? The answer is no, so we're just going to do an open brace there. We don't have any constraints, so that's of course also going to be uh, empty. We don't have any equality constraints either, so that's going to be empty. We don't have any equality constraints, so that vector is going to be empty as well. Um, we don't have any constraints on the restrictions of x1 and x2, so they can range from negative infinity to infinity. So the lower bound is going to be minus infinity minus infinity for x1 and x2. And our upper bound is going to be equal to infinity and infinity for x1 and x2.
Okay. Um, now, the next thing that we need to define is what we call an initialization step because um, this next function that we're actually going to be using, it is an iterative scheme. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to define our initial guess to be equal to, um, you can call it, for example, 1, 1 or 0, 0, it doesn't really matter. Uh, well, it does matter, but generally speaking, if you don't know what this method is, it probably has no meaning to you. Right? But this is the initialization step. Right. If you're interested in knowing, you know, some numerical schemes for uh, nonlinear programs, um, definitely check out the uh, optimization discussions that we're having uh, as well. So that is our initialization step. So the function that we're going to be using is the following one. So it's going to be fmincon, um, and it's going to return two values. Um, the first is going to be the x value that optimizes it, and the value of our functional that we're optimizing. Um, so the function that we're going to be using is fmincon. So our goal is to minimize this. Um, functional, which we are definitely minimizing so we don't have to negate any constants, which is actually pretty nice. Um, then we need to feed it our objective function, our initialization, our a, our b, our aq, and our bq, which are all blank, but let's just put them there just to be safe. So once those are saved, then we can just give this a function a run and just sort of see what it tells us. So it says that the solutions to this minimization problem are given to be negative uh, 0.05 for x1 and 1.75 for x2. And the minimal value for which this f actually takes is 1.5. And that's how you can sort of solve nonlinear programs. So actually, let's go into an example where we actually have some nonlinear constraints um, in addition to our nonlinear functional for which we seek to optimize. So let's consider the problem where our goal is to maximize this particular functional where the function is given by 4x1 squared plus 10x2 squared subset to the nonlinear inequality constraint x squared plus y squared is less than or equal to 4. So that's in a sense the interior of a circle um, with the restriction that x1 and x2 are greater than or equal to negative 1. So this technically is not the interior of a two-dimensional circle, but more so a subset of the interior of a two-dimensional circle. All right. So how would we go about solving this? So we're actually going to solve it in a very similar way before. So I'm going to first off define my objective function, uh, O fun, which is gonna be equal to a function of the function uh, variable x. Now, since we're maximizing this function, we need to negate the coefficients. So we need to put a negative sign in front of this functional. So it's gonna be negative four times x1, um, the quantity squared, and keep in mind, x1 is a vector, and then plus 10 times x2, the quantity squared and close parentheses don't forget that else MATLAB will yell at you um, the next thing I need to define is my constraint function right now the constraint function is a little bit more complicated because again our constraints could be less than or equal to or equal to so what I actually want to do is I want to create a uh, subsidiary function and I'm going to define it down here I'm gonna say function and it's gonna return two values C and the C equals um, versions for our constraints. Um, and let's call this our nonlinear constraint function of x. Um, so our constraint function is going to be equal to what? Um, and keep in mind this is a less than or equal to constraint. So c is going to be equal to x1 the quantity squared plus x2 the quantity squared. Um, and we need to set this equal to zero. So this is in the form uh, less than or equal to zero. Okay, so that's one of the little um, nuances, I guess you could say, of this nonlinear program because it requires things to be in a precise way. Um, and we don't have any equality constraints. For example, if you had like x plus y is equal to three, um, that would go into, your, for example, your CQ function, but that is blank. So we're just gonna give it a blank matrix there. Um, but keep in mind, if you have multiple, then you would have to vectorize this. For example, you would have to put a brace and a semicolon to separate the rows, um, but we only have one constraint here. Uh, so we'll keep it very, very simple. So our C function that we're gonna be using is going to be the function that is defined as non-con. So that's going to be our nonlinear con uh, constraints for a uh, nonlinear program. Um, our initialization is going to be 1, 1 for our numerical method. Uh, we don't have any A's. Um, so keep in mind this A and this B and this AQ and this BQ is for the linear constraints in the linear coefficients, both less than or equal to and equality, right? Which we have done, we only have this one nonlinear constraint. 
um, with the restrictions not included. So our restrictions, keep in mind, are in our LB and UB vectors. So LB is going to be equal to our lower bound is negative 1 for both. And our upper bound is going to be infinity for both. Once you have everything working, then you should be able to solve this nonlinear program via that function mentioned before. So that's going to be x and then f val is going to be equal to f min com of, and then we're going to feed it. Oh, we forgot our little brace there. Let's not forget that. So that's going to be equal to what? So the first thing that we need to feed it is our um, objective nonlinear function, which we've defined um, above. The next thing that we need to feed it is our initialization step, which is going to be x0, our a, our b, our aeq, our beq, and then our lower bound and our upper bound. And lastly is our non-linear constraint vectors. So this is where our c fun is going to come in play. Right? So once we have everything written there and our uh, non-con function is defined below, then we can just give this function a run and that should give us a particular solution. And notice the function does tell us that a local minimum has been found that satisfies the constraints, but notice it didn't give it to us. So where is it exactly? So notice that we have supp suppressed the output of this particular function. So if you of course remove that and then run that, then it does give us the location of our optimal value. So that means what? That means this function is optimized when x is equal to zero x1 is equal to 0 and x2 is equal to 2 with a minimum value of negative 40. That means for our original problem that the maximum value is equal to positive 40 at the same location, 0, 2. So those are some of the basics associated to the optimization toolbox that you can use for linear programming and nonlinear programming. I hope you enjoyed and I'll see you in the next video. Take care.